Hey everyone, back again with another uh, voiceover for an art process video. This one's some shorter than some of the other process videos I've done, um, because this was actually a real-time speed paint, I guess you could say. Uh, it took about 26 minutes to do this whole thing, um, and it was more for practice with depth and shapes and uh, overall composition. Um, also to get me used to landscapes again. So I started out with a reference image, which you can see there, uh, so I could kind of get, not necessarily the colors, but um, how mountains would look in the distance, because I've always kind of struggled to get that look of, of far off mountains. They've always seemed right up in your face. Um, and I think I actually got them to look decent this time and, and like they're they're far away. Um, it also gave me some practice with overcast skies, uh, though that wasn't quite what I was going for. I was mostly worried about the mountains. But yeah, anyways, this is part of my, uh, what I was talking about in some of my other videos, my, my journey to improve on different aspects of art. Um, one of the things I wanted to get back into doing was, was landscapes. Uh, and in doing so, I wanted to improve my composition. Um, also, if you haven't noticed yet, I fixed the CPU fan on my computer, so now it's silent. Uh, I'm sure there's other background noises, but not the fan. Anyways, uh, so I started, I worked from front to back, uh, just blocking in colors and putting down the shapes. And at this point, I didn't really know if I wanted to just do a simple landscape, or if I had wanted to make it like a mini scene. And it, I ended up going with the mini scene later, as you'll see. I, I've put some silhouettes of my characters in the front, in the foreground. Um, and that's a, that's a good tip, uh, is that I actually got it from Chuck Black art. If you haven't heard of Chuck Black, Go look at his YouTube channel. He does a lot of traditionals, a lot of oil paints, a lot of... Um, he doesn't describe it as hyper-realistic yet, but it's pretty hyper-realistic to me. Uh, but he had some really good advice to... Well, if you want to improve, don't do it on big pieces that you want to turn into masterpieces. Don't expect every piece of art to turn into a masterpiece. Um, do things that you enjoy doing and experiment with those and don't be upset or frustrated if they don't turn out to be great. So I decided to take that little bit of advice and really just loosen up with this image. And that's ultimately why I decided to put the silhouettes in the foreground because I really enjoy doing world building uh, and like concept building for my characters. So I figured good motivation to make this uh, good motivation to finish this piece, I guess, would be to make it relevant to my dragon characters. So yeah, uh, if you haven't heard of him, definitely go check him out. He really great, really great artist, has some really good advice videos, and not just on techniques, it's, it's also on, on things like how to view your art as an artist.
kind of started to render out certain parts, uh, like the sky and the mountains, and again rendering is just adding details, but I've purposefully kept certain things loose. Um, so I wanted to give a more cloudy look to the sky, uh, but I started kind of overworking areas, so I, I slowed down on that. But one of the things that allowed me to make this in, in 26 minutes is uh, I kept it really loose and um, more suggestive of what is there rather than these are definitely uh, fully rendered mountains. Um, I wanted to feel okay about my art if it if it wasn't you know exactly how I had imagined it so I, I let myself be less detailed and more um, kind of allowed the brushstrokes to just kind of suggest things, which I think uh, the watercolor really helps that, like with this water here. Having the watercolor, I can show that there is a definite light source reflecting onto the water from the clouds, uh, and then I use the small watercolor brush to get the uh, representation of ripples along the water surface without actually going in and, and slowly painting all the ripples. Um, which I hardly ever have patience for, which is something I need to work on. But I also get super frustrated with because it takes so long and it doesn't look the way I want. So by, by doing this, I really think I've, I've helped myself take another step forward in doing big pieces and taking them from basic to complex. Uh, and if I was doing something that was a little more detailed, actually doing a scenic piece, uh, I would probably be able to go back and finish the mountains and then finish the water. Um, so I've given myself a good base and I've left it there so that in the future when I do more pieces like this I can remember I it's okay to leave it like this and come back later. I was debating with the grass if I should use this stamp brush that is like ground vegetation, but then I decided that no, I want to get a different texture with this grass. I want it to be long grass, I don't want it to be flowers or anything, this is just plains. Um, also I feel like it would have been good for me to take the time to do out each individual blade of grass and figure out how I can get the impression of a full field without taking the time to fill in every single area with grass. And I think it helped. Um, it does kind of show that I can't, as of, as of right now, I can't do uh, the impression of a field without making sure I have dark mid and, and light and uh, light tones in the background, midground, foreground, so I do still have to take that time to do out a lot of the individual blades of grass. But I was, I was highly debating, and then I'm like, no, I gotta do it. If there's one thing I take time to uh, painstakingly do, it should be grass, because a lot of the images I'll do in the future will most likely have a lot of grass. This was also a good way to get um, more familiar with, with depth was to do the grass, so <laughs> that way I could, um, I could show where grass blades overlapped and I could do, like, it's darker on the ground because there's a lot more coverage and then lighter on the top, so it was just another good way to practice that definition, that depth, that, um, impression of having, you know, the scene right before you. So this is where I decided, yes, I'm going to put the silhouettes in. Um, I had just draw done a uh, bust drawing of Aquila, who is the silhouette that I'm doing right now, a little while back. Um, currently working on the video for that. Uh, I've got something special planned for it. 
So I wanted to do more with my characters because um, I had mentioned a while ago I didn't do enough art for myself and I figured I should, excuse the phone, <laughs> I figured I should do some art of my characters for myself uh, to get back into that, give myself more motivation to do pictures like this. Um, it also allowed me to kind of figure out how to fit a silhouette into a one layer painting after I've already done everything. Um, so what I did was I put silhouettes on a layer above everything and I used a custom brush I have that is the opacity setting is set to um, pen pressure so it kind of it kind of helps by allowing the grass to, to show through and then darkening up certain parts and then I went over again with um, one of my smaller brushes to get the grass blades in front and then anything that overlapped beyond the little hill, I could just take the eraser and shoop, just cut it off. And now I'm making a silhouette of Del Tony, who honestly, I think he should be bigger here, but I didn't want him to uh, take up too much of the image. So Del Tony is supposed to be rather large um, for his species of dragon. He's supposed to uh, at least make Aquila, who's, who's stocky, look small, but I kind of like making him more lanky and giving his, his uh, bulk in his wings and his, his body length, so I might keep that. I'm still trying to figure out height comparisons between all of the uh, characters, but it was nice to draw him. I haven't drawn him in a while. Um, a lot of my characters need redesigns, so that'll that'll come up at some point, is redesigning them. And then in the background I put something that they'd be looking at, because Aquila's not one to watch mountains, unless it's mountains that point her home. Uh, she's very much set on what's before her. Del Tony would be one to look at the scenery, uh, but his focus is typically on making sure Aquila doesn't go and do something stupid. So I had to give them something that would turn her head back and make him focus on her. So I put some some unknown dragon silhouettes flying over the mountain. They could be more characters of mine. Jeez, sorry about the phone again. I should turn that on silent next time I record. Uh, they could be some other characters of mine, or they could be um, unknowns, and that's why Aquila is is looking up at them. Um, I don't know. It's up to you guys to decide if they're dragons that they may know, or dragons that may have no reason to be there. Anyway, I certainly hope you enjoyed this, uh, took some lessons from it maybe. Um, sorry about the lack of videos. I'll be back up on an uploading schedule soon. For now, I will see you guys next time.